In this video, we're going to be solving quadratic equations where the, where the solutions are complex numbers. Remember, complex numbers take the form a plus bi, where a is the real part and the bi is the imaginary portion. In example one, we have 5x squared plus 18 is equal to 3. Start off by just doing some simple algebra. We're going to add negative 18 to both sides. If you can follow in green, that gives us 5x squared is equal to negative 15. Uh, we move on to the next portion in white where we divide both sides by 5. I'm just removing this coefficient of x here. Right? Moving on in green again, that takes us to x squared is equal to negative 3. To remove the squared portion, we're going to take the square root of both sides. And this is where the problem sets in a little bit because the square root of x squared is simple enough. The square root of x squared is just x. But what is the square root of a negative number? And there is no real solution, so we're going to end up with a complex solution. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull this square root of negative 3 aside. I'm going to break this into some pieces and remind myself that the square root of negative 3 is really the same as taking the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 3. Uh, and we know that the square root of negative 1 is defined as the letter i, the imaginary number. And the square root of 3, because it's not a perfect square, we're just going to call it, if you don't mind, we're just going to call it three, the square root of 3. So our solution is x is equal to plus or minus i square roots of 3. Let's try another example that's a little bit different. In, green, in orange, if you don't mind, we'll start out with the initial equation in orange here, for example, too, which is negative 8 times the quantity v plus 3 squared is equal to 7. And it looks like I've kind of x'd out this v plus 3 here, but what I'm suggesting to you instead is I'm kind of pretending that the v plus 3 is just a single variable. That is to say, I'm pretending that this says negative 1 8 x squared is equal to 7 because I don't need to do anything with this right now and the temptation sometimes is to actually foil this out and if you do you're going to get an explosion so sometimes better to keep it a little bit compressed so what I'm going to do here in orange first is I'm going to try to get rid of this coefficient of the variable here so I'm going to take the reciprocal of negative 1 8 with this negative 8 over 1 I'm going to multiply both sides by that and in blue, we'll get the quantity x plus 3. I'm still pretending that it has a variable. It's just a variable x squared here is equal to negative 56. Again, taking the square root of both sides, we get the square root of v plus 3 is just v plus 3. But what is the square root of negative 56? Well, that's its own problem. And I'm going to pull that aside for a second. Um, keep in mind, it doesn't really matter which order you do this in, so I'm going to go ahead and do this other part right now. If we have the v plus 3 here, so I'm just going to add negative 3 to both sides just to get everything moved over. So we have the v by itself and the numeric value on the right on the right hand side by itself. So over here, what I've done here is I've taken the square root of negative 56 over here and I've broken it into some pieces. I pulled out the square root of negative 1 because the square root of negative 1 is defined as i. I took out the square root of 4 because the square root of 4 is a perfect square. And I was left with the square root of 14. And that's not a perfect square. So what I did was, remembering that it's plus or minus, this plus sign here is this one here. This minus sign here is this one here. That it's this negative 3, because that's the a value, plus 2i times the square root of 14 or negative 3 minus 2i square roots of 14. So I hope that was helpful. Th these are the kind of problems you just have to do a whole lot of them. Let's go back and check our answers using the calculator. So here's our CAS calculator. All we're going to do here is go to the calculator screen. I'm going to just insert calculator. So from your home screen, you would have chosen calculator. And instead of using the solve function, we're going to use the C solve. C solve for complex solve. Remember when you type in the last letter of the of the command that you want to use, if it goes from italics to standard print, your calculator is recognizing that you're asking it to do something specific. And the question was 5x squared plus 18. So 5x plus 18 
is equal to 3. And we want that in terms of x, so comma, x. That means give us what solutions of x makes that true. Close the parentheses and hit Enter. And just the same answer that we got on the board, x is equal to negative. And I put the i in front. It doesn't really matter where you put it. The reason I put the imaginary number in front is because I'm so afraid that it's going to look like it's underneath the radical. Either way is fine. Um, let's try the other one. Same thing. C. Solve. S-O-L-V. And it went from italics to standard print. And it was negative one-eighth. So we use this negative sign right here. Control division. One down from here. Eight open. Whoops, sorry about that. Back here. Use this cursor here. Open parentheses. V plus, sorry. V plus three. Close parentheses squared is equal to 7. Remember, now our variable is v, so in terms of v, close parentheses, and again, same answer. And again, I had 2i times square root 14. They put the i on the outside. Again, I like the i on the other side, and I'm, I may be wrong about that, but I'm so afraid that it's going to look like the i is underneath, and it is not. So, okay, there's our video. I hope it was really helpful.